Hello everybody, Under here with another Better Balance game update. There's been quite a few recently. We're going into 3.16.1 this time. Quite a big announcement before we start the video. For anyone that isn't involved in the multiplayer scene and only really watches the VODs or streams, the, the mod that we use to balance the game the, and the one we're going to be talking about the update for today, is the Better Balance game, I'm sure you're all aware of it, is developed by one person mainly code nor and he has a team of specialists you know sort of helping him on along the way with the balance changes and whatnot but this is going to be codes uh, final update uh, i'm not sure i'm not 100 sure what the plan is after this but big shout out to code nor for doing all these updates all the hard work that he's put into the mod making the game as balanced as possible despite all the feedback whether it is positive or negative so yeah um big shout out to him you can find his steam and his twitch in the uh in the battle balance game steam page below in the description so make sure you go and give him a follow and make sure you give us a subscription on youtube come and follow me on twitch i stream quite a few days during the week monday tuesday wednesday friday mainly and anyway, let's stop babbling on and get into the video. Okay, so quite a few changes here now. The first one, probably one of the more significant changes and obvious ones, I think. Sweden's plus one to all yields in the cap has been changed slash replaced with 50% production towards libraries and workshops. Now, like I said in the previous analysis we did when this plus one to all yields was added, it doesn't look much, but it's super strong. It's, you know, as soon as you settle, you're getting plus one to everything. It's, it's basically a first meet on everything, uh, on every CS, should I say. You basically settle in on a 2-2 two -two as well because you've got that extra production extra food to grow a little bit quicker it all adds up and it's very strong 50 percent production towards libraries and workshops i quite like it synergizes well with the sweden bonus of getting great person points uh from factories and universities so i like that it's going to help with um it's going to be very strong with hypatia and not many people like industrial zones but i do so i kind of like the workshop bonus even though that won't be used as much as the library next we've got another sweden change the swedish air museum is now unlocked at diplomatic service instead of nationalism now we can go into the game itself and have a look at the difference in text here so this is where it used to be nationalism it's been moved back to its original place of diplomatic service looks quite close but this is a whole era of civics it's about 1500 tourism so you're shaving off at least 10 turns if you're on around 150 culture a turn which i think is a good estimate for for this stage of the game now these national national uh, sorry open air museums don't look that good but if you utilize and set up nicely for them you can get 10 tourism per city with one of these with these um unique improvements so, you know if you've got the builders ready you've settled as much of the different types of terrain you can, you're going to be looking at some good tourism from from these improvements, and it's going to just it's probably going to shave quite a substantial amount of turns off culture victory if you are going for that. As Sweden, is it enough to warrant something like a ban or move it up or down on the tier list? I don't think so. Um, if anything, I think after the yield change, Sweden probably moves down in terms of tiers. Anyway. Enough talking about that change, let's go back to the patch notes. Next on the list, we've got Religious Idols becomes 2 Faith and 2 Gold instead of plus 3 Faith. Religious Idols is a pantheon that affects luxury and bonus mine improvements. It's quite, it's a very underpicked pantheon in multiplayer. And I think that's because the plus 3 Faith, you know, you're really only going to pick that if you're a religious sieve. And there's just much better options if you're a religious sieve. Sacred, Sacred Path, for example. Earth Goddess, there's, there's loads of them. But this, this change just makes it so that, you know, most sieves can pick this Pantheon. 
because the two gold is going to be super nice. Gold is a very uh, important yield in multiplayer because of pre-builds being such a, a such a strategy, and that faith and gold is just going to accumulate a lot if you get this rolling very early in the game. We also play on abundant in CPL, so if you've got a couple of coppers, for example, you're just going to have loads. And the faith is nice for all civs because you can finish faith buying a great person, for example. So yeah, I think that's going to be picked more, but we'll see. Next, we've got Chancery's Science from Capture Spies has been increased from 50 to 200. I think this includes Killed Spies as well, because that's what the Chancery does in, in the uh, default game. That's what it says in the description in game as well. And I'm not sure if online speed this is going to be 100. Um, bit of a random change, not sure where this came from. Maybe it's because people aren't really building diplomatic quarters much. I don't, I'm guilty of this myself. I never really get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm comfortable sacrificing a commercial hub or a, a campus to build a diplomatic quarter. I probably should be building them more though. So all spy missions do have a chance to fail. So you don't actually have to have a defensive spy in your lands to make this work. Although it does, does help. Problem is with that is that most of the time you're going to be using spies offensively, just because of the the missions are, are so much better if if they're actually giving you something rather than just protecting your empire. The only time you really use defensive spies is if you go in space victory to obviously protect your spaceport and industrial zones, and if you get a successful promotion on an offensive spy which increases your uh, spy levels on offensive operations when that spy is in your lands for example is this game going to impact sorry is this change going to impact anything at all i don't think so i don't think it's enough to make people build these diplomatic quarters more either to be honest so yeah moving on from that we have a feed the world nerf now Feed the World Housing per Shrine and Temple has been reduced to 1 from 2. This was needed. Feed the World was becoming a very meta pick. And it makes the more stronger saves like Russia just that little bit extra more powerful. So it's, it's, it's a good change to tone that down a bit. The housing change is good because it, it provides a soft cap, if that makes sense. The food still stays there, which you do pick that Pantheon for. So yeah, hoping to see that picked a little bit less now, and um, I think that change will be enough to do that. Next, we've got removed Gandhi's production towards holy site buildings. This was another sieve that was getting a lot of uh, a lot of action, doing well in a lot of games. So the production towards holy site buildings was 50%, which is quite a lot. I've spoken about this change quite a lot. It's uh, it, it saves you doing a project for first religion a lot of the time. You do shrine then project. And yeah, it's just, like I just said, Feed the World with this, it's just, it's, it's just such a strong combination. And I do think that nerf was needed. It has not been replaced with anything, which is a bit concerning. Um, that might impact the sieve quite a lot, but it does does move it down in terms of, uh, of how strong a pick Gandhi will be. Russia's extra tiles has been reduced to two. Like I just mentioned, Rush is a very strong pick at the moment, so that's just to tone that down a bit. You need to spend a little bit more gold to get the more important tiles that you want to buy. Not much else really to discuss on that. No surprise here, we've got some Gaul nerfs. Kind of sad about this, haven't had a chance to play Gaul or Byzantium yet in a multiplayer game. But here we are anyway. First of all, we've got Gaul's King combat bonus has been reduced to 1 and no longer applies to range units. It was originally two. The problem with this bonus, in my opinion, is that all units affect it. So whether they be friend or foe, and it just gets out of control too fast. Toning it down to one, will it be enough? I think so, especially with the nerf to range units as well. Range units promotion tree is the best. And like level four crossbows, field cannons with, with the plus two on each adjacent unit is and, and their promotions is just bonkers 
Hopefully it's enough to tone it down without having to remove the ability because I never like abilities really being changed unless they're beyond broken. And we've got Gal no longer gets culture from producing units. Oh, now I just said that, I just it happens. Um, this is quite a significant nerf. You get so much culture throughout the game from building units. This might have been a step too far. I think a nerf would have been needed first to tone down the percentage. So we'll we'll have to see how that plays out. I think I think that change alone, to be honest, is enough to really really uh, nerf the sieve and make people pick it a bit less, which is probably the intention, to be honest. Moving on to the Byzantium nerfs, the Droman, which is a Quadream, has had its plus ten combat bonus removed. This is too soon, in my in my opinion. I've not. I've not seen these in action yet. Maybe people have and they just got absolutely dominated by them. But again, maybe tone it down to plus five first. I think completely removing it is, uh, is a step too far again. And Byzantium's combat bonus per Holy City has been reduced from, two to, from three to two. This was also needed. Again, it's just one of those things that spirals out of control very quickly just because of how combat works in Civ. The bigger the difference between the combat strengths, the you know the the more damage is going to exponentially increase. And one of the last changes we've got here is is a uh, a Rainer rework basically. Rainer and Armani are probably the least picked governors at the moment. The only reason that people really pick Rainer is to make use of the audience chamber. So the first change we've got here, these are all buffs. Rainer's base ability now gives you plus four per gold per foreign trade route going through the city instead of plus three. It's only plus one. It's you know it's not enough to really justify picking this governor. Next, we've got Rainer's forestry management gets plus two gold for breathtaking tiles as well as as its default bonus. This is quite nice. This could work really well with something like Boar Moose or Earth Goddess. That is a very nice change. That's going to, you know, really add up all all that gold. Rainer's tax collector now gives you a trade route in, as well as its original bonuses, which is also very nice. Extra trade route is 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 very strong. So far, these changes are probably enough to to make you want to pick the governor. Rainer's deal maker gets district and combat units added to the fifty percent purchase discount. Now this is very strong indeed. Especially if you're something like Marley, um, where you're going to be buying a lot of units, or you know you just you've got insane gold generation. Victoria, for example, this is this is a very nice bonus added. And finally, we've got Rainer's forestry management and tax collector promotions have been swapped. I think all these changes combined are are very good. I like these changes, and they're probably going to be enough to maybe pick this governor. I'm always tempted with Rainer to pick it as Victoria, especially as your first governor, and to do like commercial and harbour in one city, just to make that free inquiry that much better. So with these changes, I might actually, I might actually try that. And the final change in this video, we've got knee hangs go up 10 faith each time you buy them. Uh, I don't think the cost is the problem with this unit. I think it's just as it's, as it's, it's insane scaling, these turning, turning back a bit. I recently played a teamer where someone played Byzantium and just got absolutely annihilated by these units and there was nothing he could really do. It was too late to seize the CS or kill it. And I think it's just their promotions that make this, this unit so strong. And there we have it, guys. Another update. Hope you enjoyed it as usual. And again, much, much um, appreciated towards Codenor for the updates and all the time that he's put into this mod. And I shall see you guys in the next one.